Okay, class. We've discussed the three branches of government as we saw in the Constitution. And uh, we're going to do a small activity. Before we get to that, though, let me ask you something. <clears throat> in basketball, how many are acquainted with the three-second three rule? Okay, but most of you. Where you only have a possession of the ball for three seconds when you're in the key. What do you suppose would happen if someone decided to not obey that rule and just kind of keep the ball to themselves? Well, yeah, eventually they would lose. All right, in the same way, these people that play basketball work as a team. Each has a skill. Each depends on one another. And they work together to win. So what does that have to do with three branches of government? Okay, in the same way, the government is supposed to work as a team. Three branches of government all have specific duties and powers and uh, work together most of the time to get those things accomplished that they need to do as a government for us. So, why do they need to, why do they need to work as a team? Okay, because if they don't, that puts us in jeopardy in many ways. So who are these team players that we're talking about? All right, up here, we have the judicial branch, Right, that's the Supreme Court justices. And this is the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., where they do their work, they're deliberating, they're writing. The next one, yes, that's the White House, or the Executive Mansion. And yes, President Obama lives there. Sorry, I don't have a picture of him, but this is where he works and lives. The next one, that's the Capitol building, yes. And uh, who, is, who works in this building? Right, it's divided into two houses. Senators, yeah. comprise the Senate. And the congressmen, yeah. They are the House of Representatives. We kind of refer to the whole thing as Congress. All right, so what I'm going to have you do is to show me what you've learned. What we're going to do is there are strips that have each duty, responsibility, or power that each group has. We're going to individually find who it belongs to and place it up there. Okay? You've been divided into three groups anyway. And you're going to try to do this as correctly and as quickly as possible. All right? And to get you going on that, I have a graphic organizer here. This is yours. You'll be able to take with you. This will also help you when uh, to give you ideas on um, whether you're taking the, the quiz or whether you've got an alternate plan. Some of you there will be able to use your artistic abilities, whether it's drawing or acting or any other way that you can show me that what it's all about, what the three branches of government do, and what their purpose is, and why are they important in our lives, or in your life in particular. All right, and so while we go through this, I want you to kind of pay attention and think of the ways, those of you who are going to take the alternate route, on how you can illustrate this and show the class, your classmates and me uh, a different way of looking at the three branches of government. All right, and so, like we mentioned before, I'm going to let this all uh, start start you out and have you put together these three posters on the three branches of government. Okay, so we're back, and it looks like you did a good job. All these full, and I see your graphic organizers are all done too. These will be very valuable to you, as I mentioned before. All right, so remember we tried to achieve consensus and agree uh, as far as correctness goes of each of these posters. 
Uh, is there anyone that sees anything that might be amiss or that might not be totally right? Okay. Go ahead. The, okay. It, it enforces laws, right, for the judicial branch? All right, that's good. Yeah, it can be confusing because they interpret the law, but they don't really enforce it. So who would be the one that enforces the law then? All right. We decided that was the president acting as policeman, basically. Any others? Okay, right. This is one that I always would get confused on. He's declaring war. Right, the president does not declare war. Who does? Okay, right. The Congress is the only person who can declare war. However, the president can't ask the Congress to allow him to declare war. That's how it, how it goes. Um, the last declared war we had was in World War II, a long, long time ago. However, we have had Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, and a few other places. Okay, those are armed interventions that we've had. And because the president he directs the military and makes foreign policy. He can do that on occasion that they deem is an emergency or very necessary. Okay, so those are the two. And like I said, I used that I always thought that myself. All right. So now, why is this important? Let's get back to the basketball uh, illustration. Now, what if one? person, uh, for example, the president says, oh, okay, I want to go to work. What's going to stop him? Okay, right. The Congress and the judicial branch will back him up on that because it would not be constitutional. They can only declare war. If he was supposed to try to start a war, imagine he could. They could go back and say, well, they have the power of the purse. You're not going to get money for your war. So that's another, another thing. All right, so the whole point is no one person can and will be able to take control of the government by themselves. It has to be a group, the three working as a team, just like a basketball team. Everyone's got their job. Everyone works together. And if that's the one thing that you remember, I will be totally grateful. So, anyway, good luck with tomorrow. And I've checked off to see who has their graphic organizers. This is your exit ticket for today. All right.